So we got the legendary Ron Howard directing a movie with Glenn Close and Amy Adams. There is no way that this movie can be a disappointment, right? What's going on you guys, James here with another real review and today I'm diving into the Netflix exclusive Hillbilly Elegy directed by Ron Howard and starring the legendary Glenn Close, Amy Adams, Gabriel Brasso, and much more. But man, this is a movie that is... Oof. Now before I tell you what I liked about the movie and unfortunately what I didn't like so much about Hillbilly Elegy, guys if it's your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James where I talk about movies early just like this all the time. So get subscribed if you haven't and tap on the bell so you stay up to date with anything new. Man, it's award season so it's going to be busy here at the channel. You're not going to want to miss out on any reactions or reviews that I got coming for you guys. And if you haven't, smash the like button and get loud in the comments below. Let's talk about Hillbilly Elegy. Are you watching it this weekend or if you did, what did you think about this movie? guys? I gotta air out my feelings in this video. So let's get to work. Hillbilly Elegy is about a Yale Law student named JD who gets back to his hometown roots in Kentucky to help his mother who's struggling and revisits a large part of his history to not only help him in his current situation, but also help him heal internally. So this is a movie that is based on a novel and a true story by JD Vance himself. And JD Vance is played by Gabriel Brasso, who honestly kind of looks similar. They did this thing at the end of the movie where they showed who the actual JD Vance is, and they did a decent job casting honestly it's not the cast that's the problem here it's pretty much everything else now hey let's not get too negative and let's dive into what i actually liked about hillbilly elegy because hey i might be shocking some people but this is not the worst movie of 2020 even though ron howard has been a little hit and miss lately he still brings in some amazing talent like hans zimmer and david fleming both of them worked on the score here and wow they composed a beautiful piece of music for this film. Every scene felt alive thanks to the score. I was really brought into certain scenes because of the music. Oh boy, it really had a great vibe to it. And I'm not from Kentucky, but this film really is shot beautifully and gave me this backwoods vibe. So for the first 20 or 30 minutes of the film, I really felt like it did a good job at setting the scene. So outside of those technical elements I enjoyed, I have to say Glenn Close really does a good job in this film. She's working with an otherwise awful script, but man, she is putting on a great performance and she disappears as Mama, who actually plays the grandmother to JD and the mother of Amy Adams' character, Bev. So this is a film that, man, she just gives it her all. She's chewing scenes here. Her character is very much my way or the highway with the sign of compassion every now and then, but that's the thing. See, she conveyed that to me. A lot of the other acting here and we'll talk about it just was not very compelling but man Glenn Close does a pretty darn good job with exactly what she's afforded in this role and yes I think there is a good story in here somewhere but guys that's where all the positives stop unfortunately Hillbilly Elegy is nothing more than a disappointment Ron Howard is a legend, and when you put him in the company of Glenn Close and Amy Adams, there's zero reason why this movie should have failed as much as it did. It fell flat for the majority of the movie, which comes in at over two hours if I'm not mistaken. So Ron Howard is a director that I love, but I come to expect better from him. There is really nothing about this story that is very convincing, and the script is mainly to blame. There are a lot of themes and elements of the story that are explored, but they just touch the surface, they never dive into it, and there are layers that are presented to us, but the movie never peels that back. The film spends a lot of time skipping around so much to different parts of JD's life that I never felt settled into a singular moment. I understand that non-linear storytelling here was gonna be the entire film. I mean, the movie opens up with JD's voice, uh, the adult JD, narrating what's going on with his past life, his childhood memory. And I get it, but I just don't think it worked because the movie too often skipped around and never settled. And then there are just way too many times where Hillbilly Elegy feels it is deeper than it really is. Guys, there are some moments in this film that made me groan out loud. One of them comes from Glenn Close and the younger J.D. Vance, where they're talking about the movie Terminator. But the thing is, we're getting a Terminator analogy about how there are good Terminators, bad Terminators. And I forgot the third bit of that analogy, but to be honest, it is just such a distraction from what should have been a very personal moment between JD and his grandmother but man the movie really thinks it has a lot of layers to explore and I'm pretty sure it would have but the script is just very basic. I also never really got on board with any of the acting outside of Glenn Close. I love Amy Adams and I know she's a stellar actress. Gabriel Brasso here, I don't know much about him but I do know a lot about Haley Bennett who I loved in The Devil all the time this year. 
The thing is, all three of them were just totally unconvincing. It felt as if all of them were just reading their lines, and maybe that's due to the awful screenplay, but at least Glenn Close gave it her all and tried to add even an ounce of natural personality to her role. Everyone else kind of felt cookie cutter. So not only was that underwhelming, but then I became frustrated with the fact that the film is just telling us that JD Vance and his girlfriend, Usha, are a great couple. This is supposed to be a big part of JD's life, where he eventually has to break it to his girlfriend that, hey, this is my family. And when we do get that moment, it felt very surface level. Oh my gosh, I just was cringing because every time they have a meaningful conversation, it's also on the phone. So the film continues to cut from Kentucky all the way back to Yale, then Kentucky, then Yale. And I'm like, guys, can we please have them in a room together and can we develop their relationship? But no, the film is telling us that they're a loving couple, but I didn't feel that. And while I praised some technical areas for Hobilly Elegy, there are some other areas where this film is just flat out messy. The cinematography is just wildly inconsistent, and there are so many times where the camera gets out of focus only to be brought back into focus pretty quickly, and I guess that's supposed to add dramatic appeal, but in that moment and many others, it just serves as a distraction. The camera cuts were really noticeable in the worst way, and the editing honestly was questionable for me. I never thought I needed to say this about a Ron Howard directed movie, but why did we get so many sequences of shots that just felt so frantic and moments where we didn't need that, just focus on JD's face, keep us with him, and have us feel the emotion that he feels, but instead we're subjected to camera cuts outside the car on the highway, looking at signs, bright lights, and man, it just never flowed in any scene. And on top of all this guys, that third act was a total drag. I was very much looking at my watch the entire time in that final 30 minute stretch because I just really wasn't feeling this film. You get to a certain point, at least I did, where I just don't really care too much about the story. And that's really because it's just all too predictable. This movie really isn't different than many dramatic tales of this kind that I've seen before. And that is just a shame. So overall guys, Hillbilly Elegy has all the makings of an award season contender. Director Ron Howard, the legendary Glenn Close and Oscar nominated actress Amy Adams. But for as star studded as this movie is, it just falls completely flat. It turns into Oscar bait of the worst kind and makes me wonder if the book really was any better than its adaptation. While we still get great actors trying to make the best of a terrible script, it just wasn't enough for me to stay engaged with a story that's otherwise entirely predictable. Lots of this film spends time trying to tell the audience to sympathize with JD in his story, but I just never connected with it. It's a shame too, because with all of the talent involved, Hillbilly Elegy should have been on best of 2020 list. Instead, it's going to be at the bottom of mine, and honestly, it will go down as one of the more forgettable award season films that I've ever seen. So there you have it guys, that's my real review of Hillbilly Elegy, a movie that unfortunately was not very good and I can't tell you I recommend it, but if you do catch it this week on Netflix, I want to know what you guys have to say about it. Get loud in the comments below and smash that like button if you haven't already. And guys, we're so close to 3,000 subscribers and it's all because of you. So if you haven't already, consider hitting the big red button below and subscribing to the channel. Tap on that bell so you don't miss out on any more coverage for the rest of the year. I cannot wait. We're about to get into award season and it's going to be so much fun and very different. Thanks, COVID. Alrighty, guys. Well, I got more movies to watch. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you at the next screening.